All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to give you another example of an inductive construction of a subsequence because it's such an important technique. So consider the following example. So suppose you have a sequence of positive terms. So Sn is positive for all n. And Sn doesn't necessarily go to zero, but we know that the infimum so think of the minimum value of Sn, where n is in n, is zero. So consider the following sequence like that. So you have positive terms, but even though it doesn't necessarily go to zero, at least kind of the smallest value goes to zero. It's kind of like that. Ooh, almost like a roller coaster. Now, what we want to show is something pretty amazing, namely, not only does Sn have a subsequence that goes to zero, but in fact, it has a decreasing subsequence that goes to zero. Kind of there's a decreasing express string that goes to zero. Kind of like here. So there's a subsequence Snk that goes to zero. So let's show that. Show Sn has a subsequence, has a decreasing subsequence uh, Snk with Snk going to zero as k goes to infinity. All right, and how do we do that? Again, we do it inductively, meaning we first define S1, and then given Snk, uh, we'll first define Sn1, and given Snk, we'll define the next term. So here's our goal. What we wanna do, we wanna construct Snk such that Essentially, again, this is positive by assumption, but we just want S and K less than 1 over K for all K. And of course, also that it's decreasing. So, step one, let's do the following. <coughs> kind of the base case, so let's find S and 1. So what do we want? We want S and 1 to be less than one. But look, remember the infimum is zero. So definitely one is bigger than the infimum, but that just means remember that you're not the worst student, so there's someone worse than you. So since one is bigger than zero, which is the infimum of Sn, there is, is some element in there, let's call it Sn1, as such that Sn1 is less than 1. And that's precisely what we want, just some term less than 1. And that, have, that works because the minimum is 0. So there should be a term definitely less than 1. All right. Now step 2 is kind of the inductive step. So suppose <clears throat> we found Sn1, Sn2, up to Snk, with, again, decreasing, so Sn1 is, uh, yeah, is bigger than Sn2, it's bigger than Sn3, which is bigger than Snk, and the stuff that we want. So Sn1 is less than 1, Sn2 is less than 1 half, and Snk is less than 1 over k. Then what we want, we want to find Snk plus 1, that's smaller than all that. We want to find Snk plus 1, let's say smaller than Snk. So that's enough because Snk is the smallest of them all. And <clears throat> Snk plus 1, less than 1 over k plus 1. 
Okay, how do we do this? So we have to be slightly more careful. So it's really the same argument as here, but remember, first of all, we need to guarantee that SNK plus one is less than SNK. And we have the same issue as before. We need to guarantee that the K plus first express stop really comes after all the other ones. So one th thing that works is simply guarantee this new stop to be less than all the stops before. So that's why we need to consider the following number. And again, it looks very weird, but consider the minimum okay, of one over K plus one Makes sense because we want this to be less than one over k plus one, but also all the trains that come before the kth express stop. So s1, s2, da da da, up to snk. Okay. So what is going on? So we have again this is one over k plus one, and we have let's say s1, s2, maybe snk doesn't matter, and let's consider the minimum of them all. Now the minimum is greater than the zero, which is the infimum. So again, the minimum of all those numbers is greater than the infimum of all the Sn. So definitely what we have, we will get a new value, Sn k plus one, that's smaller than all those ones. And why does that solve our problem? Well, it's smaller than Sn k, because you see this is bigger than that, but it's also smaller than one over k plus one, because again, it's smaller than that. And because, just like last time, because it's a new stop, we get that it cannot be one of the old stops. So definitely this has to come way after all the previous stops. So that's why it's really a subsequence. Um, so since, now here's the thing. This is positive. This is positive by assumption, this is positive, this is positive, and since you're taking a minimum of finite number of values, this is positive. And remember what is zero? Well, it's just the infimo. So again, same situation, you're not the worst student, so there's a student who's worse than you. So there is. Sn k plus one with Sn k plus one less than the minimum of all those S one S two up to Sn k, and then we are pretty much done because what do we have? Well, we know because it's smaller than the smallest of those them all. It's funny, because in Pokemon, you want to be the greatest of them all. Here, in analysis, you want to be the smallest of them all. So we get this is less than 1 over k plus 1. Done. We have snk plus 1 is less than snk. Done. So it's decreasing. And last but not least, you see, because um, snk plus 1 is less than all those values, it has to be different. It's different from S1, S2, up to SNK. So it's really a new city that you haven't seen before, so it must be a new stop. So NK plus one comes really after NK. Otherwise, it would have been a stop that you've seen before. Okay, good. And therefore, what have we found? We found a decreasing subsequence So SNK is decreasing and SNK is less than one over K for all K. But remember, this term is also positive. So in the end, by the squeeze theorem, SNK goes to zero. And we're done and we can stay home happy. All right, thank you.